Hi, my name is Cullen Lee. And I'm Drew Roberts. And I'm Bradley Goforth. And I'm Sage Elmore. So for our Fluid Dynamics project, we are discussing laminar flow. So some of you may know what laminar flow is, and for those of you who don't, I'm going to do a brief introduction about it. So laminar flow is when the Reynolds number is less than 2100. Now, to calculate the Reynolds number, you take rho times your V times D over mu. And as you can see here, your rho is going to be the density of your fluid, your V is going to be your velocity of your fluid, your D is the diameter of the pipe that the fluid is flowing through, and your mu is going to be viscosity of your fluid. Now, as you can see up here, you have your transitional flow, which is when the Reynolds number is greater than 2100, but less than 4000. And then you have your turbulent flow, which is going to be more of a rougher flow. It's going to be, um, I mean, it's just going to be a very rough flow compared to a laminar, which is a very smooth, very glassy looking flow. And your turbulent, turbulent flow is going to be anything with a Reynolds number greater than 4000. So here we see a comparison of laminar flow on the left and turbulent flow on the right. And you can see by laminar flow on the left, it has a crystal clear stream in which you can see through. This has a Reynolds number of under 2100. The turbulent flow, however, is harder to see through. It has a Reynolds number of over 4000. So for our laminar flow nozzle, we used one foot of four inch PVC, as well as one foot of one and a half inch PVC, four four inch test caps, a female hose adapter, two part epoxy putty, multiple scouring pads, 750 straws, one thin piece of aluminum sheeting we got from a soda can, and some door screen mesh. So our first step for the laminar flow nozzle will be to drill a hole towards one end of the main chamber or the 4 inch PVC pipe large enough to insert the 1 inch diameter PVC pipe. The second step will be to cut the scouring pads into a circle that will fit tightly inside the 4 inch PVC. We will then slide these scouring pads inside the PVC pipe directly under the hole we drilled. These scouring pads will help reduce the initial velocity and turbulence of the water at the entrance. We will then insert straws to force the water into parallel paths helping the laminar flow. For the fourth step, we'll gather the test caps and cut out the center of one to help support the screen mesh inside the 4 inch PVC pipe. We'll need to cut the screen mesh and wrap it around the outside of the second cap that we cut the center out of. We will then place these inside the 4 inch PVC pipe to separate the internal components of our laminar flow device. The sixth step is to drill a small hole in aluminum sheeting and a test cap to create the exit nozzle. We will seal these two pieces together and place them on the end of the 4 inch PVC pipe. For the last step we will insert the 1 inch PVC pipe into the hole we cut in the 4 inch PVC pipe. This pipe will connect the main chamber to the water supply. Its tangential inlet helps eliminate turbulence. And finally we will then seal the end caps and the two pipes together. So whenever we fully assembled our laminar flow nozzle, this is what we came out with. You can see right here that the water's coming out pretty clear. Uh, it's working pretty well. You can see my hand through the stream. There's no turbulence moving down. The water stays as a stream all the way until it hits the ground. That's a good sign of laminar flow. If your water's turbulent, it generally breaks up into different pieces as it's moving along its trajectory. So even when disrupting the flow, you can see that we can still get a real crystal clear arc of water just because the water's all going in the same direction. 